right, here we are with uh, Brian Clement of Hippocrates Health Institute. Brian, you were telling me about some new technology you just figured out. Why don't you explain what it is? Yes, it's interesting. For about 30 some years, I've been playing in my head with the idea of how living food nutrients digest in the cell, and other ones do not. And I was about 80% there, but hovered at that place for about the last 20 some years. And just recently, as you may have read in one of our magazines, uh, number 31-2, uh, there was a professor from the University of Washington who spoke about the fourth phase of water. Now, all of us remember from high school the very first three phases. Number one is it's solid, that's when it's ice, it's vapor, and it also flows. But the fourth phase is it's ionic, ionic meaning electrically charged. And so what we now have discovered in science and have documented this is that water attracts energy and leaves energy, releases it. And because of that, I got that 20% of the puzzle I was missing. So just this morning, I spent two hours putting together my latest PowerPoint that certainly will emerge into a book. I probably will call it Quantum Biology by next year. And it really talks about the ionic and energetic effects and how it all works together, symbiosis, uh, that really, in a way, addresses so-called spirituality. Talks about the godliness of it, but without doing that, we're manifesting it in science and showing you that there's a scientific validation of the godliness out there. So that's my excitement now in the project I'm working on. Well, Brian, as the raw food diet gets more popular, just like the vegetarian diet did years ago, there's a lot of raw junk food out there. Can you explain to people the difference between living foods and raw foods? Well, recently I was on a panel in New York City uh, with other living food or raw food experts, and one of the young men who I have great admiration for, David Wolf, was there. And of course, somebody had to throw the wrench into the, into the pot there. And we discussed you know, the problems I have with things like so-called raw chocolate, most of which isn't raw and how people consume it as a candy bar, and they always put sugars in it, like agave, which is never raw, and is worse for you than high fructose corn syrup. And uh, I explained that, look, you know, people really make f fun with food. They make recreation out of food. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, let's be clear. Uh, that was a good part of my early life. And when I started to have a real life, when I started to grow and to develop and mature and understand the things that mattered, you know, the things that truly mattered, food became uh, far less important for the fun aspect, but absolutely important for the nourishment aspect. As I wrote in one of my recent articles, uh, food is fuel, nothing more than that. And what it does is fuel a life that's either happy or sad. And if you're sad, you're attracted to dead, dying foods that literally uh, make you feel the way you feel about yourself. And when you're happy, and the happier you become, the more content you become, the more fulfilled you become, you're attracted to food that gives you energy. And so, quite simply, I think that there's junk foods out there are sort of veiling people's emotional problems. And if they can get beyond those emotional problems, start to really work on the most important aspect of human health, and that's the emotional part of human health. Uh, they'll start to let those things slip aside. But I don't condemn the use of those. I'm certainly happier with the person on raw chocolate than I am Hershey candy bars. I'm not so much happier, though. <laughs> well, there are a lot of people... Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life. Brighten up your life